today I get to chat with you guys about handling client pieces. My client brought me three pieces from her house and wanted a different look for each of them. If you're thinking of taking on client work, the biggest suggestion I can get you is have an agreement from the get-go about the expectations. Approximately how long it's gonna take you to do the piece, approximately how much it's going to cost, especially when you are just about to get into it and the price could change depending on how much repair it needs. And also the style, the colors, the handles, the stain colors, all of that needs to be choosed ahead of time. Time is valuable. And so if this is not chosen ahead of time, it can really cut into the time needed to work on the piece and get it done if the client is changing colors after you have already started. For this particular piece, I was painting the inside and the outside, but I was staining the top. For the front of this piece, she wanted burlap on the archway inserts. She wanted it painted white, picket fence by Fusion, and then the coffee table she wanted painted chocolate by Fusion with the top stained as well. And then the side table, we didn't set the right expectations from the get-go and so we chose after the fact to have it painted in the same picket fence white. When I have two-toned client pieces, I like to strip the tops before I even start and clean the bases before sanding. For all the pieces, you can use Premium Stripper or Green Ease. It's a natural soy-based product that's amazing. For the premium stripper, I use afterwash to clean them up. For greenies, it actually comes with its own finishing cleanser, and you can find a discount code in the description below. For this particular piece, I knew the client wanted just one knob on each of these drawers, and so I knew I needed to fill this hole. I have craft sticks, wooden dowels that you can get at Michael's or Hobby Lobby, and these sticks work super well. It was a tight fit on this one, but typically for other ones, they fit. You can glue them in with wood, cut them to size, stick them down in there I had to kind of hammer them and then use a bit of wood filler on the top and then you're gonna sand them after but if you tried to wood fill this entire thing it just doesn't look right and it could potentially crack I buffed down the rest of the piece that was going to be painted to prevent any bleed through on the white paint or any light paint when I'm going with light colors, I use a shellac Benzinzer primer for the underneath. Now, disclaimer, you are not supposed to spray shellac. You can spray any of the water-based sealers, but the shellac you are not supposed to put through a sprayer. I've never had an issue, but they do say that shellac is flammable and so it is better to roll it on or paint it on. So back to working on all three. While the primer's drying on that first one, I started sanding the next ones and wiping those down to get them ready to be painted. At this point, because I didn't manage the client expectations super well, I should have known that the side table was gonna be painted white and I would have primed it at the same time as the buffet. But because, learned from my mistake, I didn't get clarity on the color of that side table ahead of time, I wasn't able to prime it until after. This was my first time using fusion paint and it's amazing, but it dries really fast. And so as I was doing it by hand, I noticed that I was getting a lot of brush marks. And so I had to sand it down quite a bit and then I used my sprayer to spray it on. So if you're using fusion, make sure whatever the climate is that you're in, it, it just dries really fast and works much better, at least for me, through a sprayer. While that chocolate was drying, I went and got the sprayer and filled it with the Fusion Picket Fence and it was beautiful because I had gone through the shellac, I had sanded it down just a little bit by hand to make sure that any, any roughness at all was out and then the paint went on flawlessly. I'm using the Wagner Flexio 5000 for this. For the second coat for the chocolate piece, I put it through my Home Right sprayer. I am not in love with this sprayer yet. It's very inexpensive and it's gonna be on sale during Prime Day. It's a great beginner one, but you do not wanna tilt it. So it doesn't have as much versatility as my $250 sprayer, but it is a great starter sprayer. You just need to keep it upright. At this point in the three client pieces, I have all the bases painted the colors that they're supposed to be, and I'm on my last finishing layers of these. The final layer that you're gonna need on any of these pieces is a water-based polycrylic, and I tint my polycrylic with the paint that I'm currently using. And so, especially for white and really dark colors, you can tint it with a little bit of your paint to make sure that it goes on flawlessly and doesn't discolor at all. All right, for these burlap inserts, I came up with a genius idea. I had drawer liner that I put inside the space because the backing of this door could not come out of the arch. I used an X-Acto knife and cut it to frame and then I peeled it off and I stuck it to some burlap fabric that I had left over and I cut it to size. It fit perfectly. 
And with that drawer liner, it's not sticky enough to where you can unstick it easily. And I unstuck it and then I stuck it to another piece. I cut it out and both of them went on so perfect. So anytime you need to cut out a particular shape, drawer liners are gonna be my go-to for measuring. Once these were cut to fit, I used the primer by Wise Out, it's clear, to act as a glue and a mod podge. So I layered first the clear primer, I stuck the burlap to it, and then I went over the top filling it in and making sure that it was securely attached. I covered the entire surface with that primer. I had to do a little bit of trimming on the bottom. Other than that, it dried clear and it looked perfectly exactly how the client wanted it. It might not be your favorite, but again, this is the client's choice and she loved the burlap detail. Once the bases of all three client pieces are done, then I start the staining. Staining all three of these pieces with Jacobian, by Minwax was the client's choice, and I made sure that all the tops were sanded down completely to the raw wood. I had sanded them down with 100, then 120, then 150, and then 180, working up through the grit so that that wood grain takes to the stain really evenly. I cleaned off the surface after, after every sand, and then before you stain, you can either use a wood conditioner, or what I like to do is wipe the entire surface with mineral spirits before I start staining. I use a staining sponge when I'm applying and it goes on really well because you almost don't even have to re-dip it because this sponge soaks up so much stain. My go-to for wiping off stain is shop cloths. They're blue and they soak up so much. You can keep unfolding and refolding and it doesn't soak through and it just, I can use a few rags for one entire surface. Now in between staining coats, I do wrap my sponge in my glove and it keeps it for me until the next day. Now make sure you don't click out of this video because the best part is coming where I show you what I do when these pieces are done through AI technology. Once all three surfaces were stained, I let those dry overnight before I started applying Applying the poly. I used polyurethane by Minwax to seal in these pieces to perfection. When you're hand painting it on like this, you want to make sure that you go over it and get it really smooth and very even, especially with your last stroke. It all needs to go in the same direction. I use a butane torch that you can literally use in your kitchen for food to pop any of the bubbles and then it turns out for this flawless finish. I work with all three of these surfaces in tandem with each other to make sure that they all finish around the same time. And then I drill for the new hardware, apply the new hardware, and these I got off Amazon and they're adjustable. And the client pieces are ready to get picked up 48 hours later. Now, if you're thinking about taking on client work, find me on Instagram. I'd love to talk to you about pricing and maintaining your worth. So contact me, find me on Instagram, Facebook, and definitely here. Oh, but just wait, I have one more thing to show you. Whenever I need to save on time, I use this app called Photo Room and you guys will not believe the pictures that it gets. I took these photos on my driveway. I put them through this app. I do pay for the pro version, but it's not very expensive. And it places my furniture into rooms and I can specify with this AI exactly what type of room, what type of stuff I'd like around. I can save these photos and I can use them for my portfolio. Or if I'm selling a piece, I can use this to stage it on Facebook Marketplace. And so it's an incredible app. You can use it to get different size ratios too. So if you need something that's square, something for YouTube that's horizontal, something for a reel that's completely vertical, you can use it to create all of that in all types of spaces. This is how I was able to capture these shots for this video and also my portfolio and to send to the client so she could see it ready for her space and ready to be picked up. Thank you guys for joining me. You'll see new videos dropping each week, so make sure you're subscribed.